Alright, you two back in with another update. Um, there, that's probably better. <laughs> of course, who doesn't like to listen to the radio while they work? Um, anyways, it is uh, April 20th, something in there. Um, so, layout update. And actually, there's a few things. So, um, before we get to that real quick, I just want to throw in here, uh, I'm getting real nerdy, nerd level excited about um, two movies. Number one, God's Not Dead 2. It's going to be in theaters in eight days. We're looking forward to that. The first one was superb. Superb, superb. The second one looks like it's going to be just as good. Second movie... Um, as all of you know, May 6, 2016, the next installment in the MCU. Um, and I'm really excited, especially because they're bringing Spider-Man in. And then with the contract Marvel signed with Sony, that also includes the Sinister Six. And if you go back and watch The Amazing Spider-Man 2, see at the end where all those doors are starting to raise... That's the Sinister Six. There's uh, the Vulture outfit, the Glider, Doc Ock's tentacles, and then of course at the end of the movie we see the Rhino. So, uh, yeah, Spidey and his associated villains can be brought into the MCU and used in a movie at any time. This is Dilly Sama Sony. Um, and they're also going to help Sony do a basically reboot of the Spider-Man franchise. And that's coming up I'm in later in Phase 3. However, if you've watched the latest Marvel trailer, you know Spidey will make an appearance. So, uh, <laughs> um, I think, oh, I forgot his name, the British kid who did the Amazing Spider-Man. I, I think he's going to be a tough act to beat. Um, told me the movies with Tobey Maguire were Probably closer to comics because the webbing actually came out of his hand. But as far as actors go, uh, Tobey Maguire wasn't the best actor in those movies. But that's just my personal opinion. Anyways, yeah, I'm getting nerd fever <laughs> over this movie. But anyways, on to the update. So, you might notice we have a new bench work section. Yay! And, uh, okay, pardon the horrible, horrible mess down here. But I'm kind of in a rush to get the bench work done as soon as possible. Ooh, now that we have one, we have two new sections. Double A. Uh, uh, yeah. But um, now that this one is in, uh, get around the other side of the post here. There's the limit. As f this is as far as the bench work is going to come this direction. And then this back row right here is as far as it's going to go that direction. So this, there's the uh, perimeter of the layout. Um, and you might be wondering, you're putting a double decker in there, Jacob? There's only, uh, aisleways are going to be incredibly cramped. Eh, and you're right, but 99% of the time, I'm the only one down here, so... You know, it doesn't make that much difference. Um, but, yeah, I got this one in. Now, this one is at the height of the 4x8. This one, uh, sorry, pardon the mess, guys. I'm real sorry about this. Um, if you'll notice, it's down an extra probably 4 inches from the staging yard height. And the... Uh, Clamps are sitting there because I literally finished bolting these like five minutes ago. So, yeah, it's Friday night. But, and when I did, I just screwed an extra one by to that other section and then ran a bolt through it like I do with the legs, which I still got to go back and do that. But, um, so that's that one. This was I was originally going to build a little CTC dispatch center right here. But I have a different table for that, and we'll get to it in a bit here. But yeah, there's this one. Um, I was going to go four legs by side three. 
because the main line to Athens comes out right there and it's going to come, it's going to curve. And then it's going to slip up. If I can hold this still enough, it's going to come right along this line here. Just right along the back of my workbench around the other side of the room. Pardon the mess. It's going to pop up. Um, pop up, whoosh, staging yard, and then come around to the other staging yard. And then the main line, which I've got the cork sticking out right there, this would technically be the main line west towards Columbus, Ohio. It's going to come in, it's going to curve, um, cross, whoosh, it's going to come in. And it's going to be on climb. And then right in here somewhere I'm going to have a Ives switch. Or that's what John Armstrong called turnouts that make into, that form continuous running loops. Um, and have it connect to the staging right there. And it'll make a continuous run loop. So I'll have one on the 4x8. Because the way I laid out the track, I've essentially got two main lines when I'm done with the track work on here. One loop on the inside, another loop on the outside, plus a continuous run connection on this level, and a continuous run on that level. So, yeah. So that's what's new with the bench work sections. Um, also, I'm taking another one of my shells and adding wheels to it. That's why the, all the magazines are sitting around. Um, the other thing we picked up was, well, yeah, we, I, whatever. Two of these computer desks, they've got two sections and each one folds. Um, one of these is going to go under the 4x8 when I finally get my Digitrax system. But it's just going to have the Digitrax and a little street door thing, the whole batteries, the throttles, the place to put throttles and all that. The other one is going to go either under this section or this section. And that's that one is going to become my dispatch center. You know, the big the big panel for the laptop and the small one for the mouse. Um, which we might have to do some modifications to the frame because when you put the laptop on them at their lowest setting and lift the lid up, um, they are two inches too high. Two inches. Can you believe the irony of that? Boy, but um, not much has happened on the layout. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but I've got the ballast glued all the way to right there. Um, just in case you didn't see one of my earlier videos, there's my two new, two of my new box cars, Norfolk Southern, because I yes I do model the modern era. Just the layout is set in the fifties. And then a Milwaukee Road green box car. Um, so that's what's up with the scenery. Nothing else really has happened on here because I'm waiting on the hill to get repainted. Well, I'm waiting on a day with no wind, which is extremely hard to find up here, to go in, get all this styrene painted, put some plaster up in here to cover that, and then get the hill repainted. And I ran out of glue. <laughs> and I'm also waiting for a clear day to, with no wind to air spray my uh, coal storage silos. Um, the vertical part of the loading conveyor I built, which, yeah, roughly like that, but higher up. Spray paint that. Um, spray paint the bottom for my unloading pit. Spray paint this part of the unloading pit. And I ran out of glue, so the scenery is eh, kind of halted. Oh, one note real quick. I noticed when you're using straight sink cement, it seems to adhere better to fine granular stuff. This is fine. This is coarse. Um, doesn't seem to adhere as well to the coarse as it does to fine stuff. But that's just, you know, an observation of mine. That's just my two cents. Take it or leave it. Um, the area where I have been getting a fair amount done is freight cars. Um, 
So yeah, I can't work all night on the bench work, obviously. Everything I've been doing is I've been down here kind of tackling uh, freight cars. These all had the uh, good old-fashioned coupler boxes molded onto the truck frames. Yay. Um, but this one, these are snap boxes. I just chopped them off. There's a little styrene ridge right in there. I glued the box on, snapped the lid shut, put the coupler in. And I will note the ones that snap shut, I took this car and I rammed it like five times against my metal coupler height gauge. So these boxes will hold without a screw. Um, these, I also did this car. Both of these are snap boxes. Um, same principle, there's a styrene tab, I glued it on. This one, I didn't have any more snap boxes. But these two cars are the same, so um, I drilled a hole with a 556 bit set, drill bit set from Katie. Put the box on, and these two are the screw types. So that's what I did with that. So that's three more cars ready to go. Um, the flanges on these are a little too deep. You can hear them hitting the gravel, but. Um, the wheels for these are the old stubby axles. The axles don't have any points on them. So just to note, if you're converting a bunch of older Bachman and or Tyco stuff, uh, the w axles don't have points on them. Um, I looked it up, and you can get them from Northwest Shoreline. Used to be able to get them from Lack Flight, but that was in 2002, and now it's Shoreline. So there's that. Um, final thing. This, this is an old Tyco coal hopper. Um, again, I'm endeavoring to replace with bi mount couplers. Not the best hopper car. It isn't real, wasn't really much of a place to do body mount because of the slope right here. So I popped the, and the frame off. I filed the sloped area right there down flat. Put a styrene shim on it. And I literally just glued the bottom half of the coupler boxes on. Um, I used the top half for something else, so I'm going to fabricate some out of styrene. Styrene is a wonderful little tool, isn't it, people? It's fantastic. But uh, fabricate some ones out of styrene and then drill and thread a hole and screw the couplers in. So, yeah, that's all for this update. Um, really excited about the new bench work. Uh, so, yeah, slowly but surely it is coming. So, everybody, thanks for watching. Um, get out and vote. Number one. Number two, God's not dead. Two, you'll really love it. Number three, I'm drooling over Civil War. So, uh, there's a comment box below. There's the like button. And, of course, there's always the subscribe if you want to click that, which I would love. Um, <laughs> Also, love to hear from you guys the comments, you know, on the new bench work, what you think of what I'm doing with the cars, the little method I found out for dealing with the old Tyco coal hoppers. Um, but yeah, everybody take care. God bless. Um, and you know, remember the empty tomb this Sunday. Everybody take care. God bless. And I will see you next time.